show. Uh, you know what it is. It's in the title. We're going to listen to it. I'm going to react. And you're going to sit there and like it. You hear me? Thanks to Jay Beatty and crew for the intro music. And to my web guy for that stinger at the beginning for True.Tube. Visit True.Tube. Check it out. This is uh, my recording. I have a brand new uh, YouTube channel. I put it up there. This is not a public recording. Oh, it's public. It's not public on my platforms yet. Laura Yip, Councillor Yip of the Niagara Region, representing St. Catharines, was on with the Tom McConnell Show on 610 CKTB. 905-688-2582. Dial it right down the, right down the middle. 905-688-2582. That's CKTB. Also, text us at 61010. <laughs> Going back into my role. I used to have a show on 610 CKTB. For those that didn't know and are seeing me for the first time, welcome. Twitter, Twitch, DLive, YouTube, Facebook, and YouTube. I was on 610 CKTB when I was a regular caller to Tom McConnell's show after one of the elections. I got to be f pretty friendly with most of the media types because it's important when you're running for an election to get your word out. Calvin, uh, Calvin, Calvin, ah, oh, Calvin's last name has gone away from me. He was there for a while. Matthew Van Dodgen was over at the Standard for a while. Uh, Calvin Reed was at the Standard. He was the political reporter. He does have a political uh, degree, I think, from Queens in politics. He was al always covered me fairly. Of course, I give him a hard time when I didn't get the proper, uh, you know, accolades or whatever. Or he got something wrong, which wasn't very often. Grant LaFleche is over at the Standard now. Um, for whatever reason, these people I had friendships with, including Tom McConnell, uh, who I consider a conservative, but kind of rolls with the punches. He's a big media guy, right? When you work for Bell, you gotta you gotta tow Bell's line, or you're gone. And he's got a pretty good job over there and does a fairly good job. I mean, he's regressed in the last few years with the verbal ticks, which you're going to hear the, eh, 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 and the, I know, and, and right, and all that kind of thing. The verbal ticks drive me crazy, and Tommy's better than that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've never criticized him personally, just, you know, what he does on there. Um, so, anyway, he's given time to Lori Yip to come out and tell her tell us her version of the harassment issue. Now, the local media is taking this up uh, again. I kind of provoked it, I think, um, feeling like I may be a candidate in the next federal election. So, um, guess who I'm going to be warring with? I mean, uh, warring. It's a bad analogy. I get it. The left, the radical left. Now, what we forget, what you probably don't know already, this is kind of like a cab drive. I drive around, but I come back to the point. What we forget is most people are moderate middle. The silent majority are in the middle, whether you're conservative, libertarian, or uh, left, liberal. 95% plus of us are in the fat part of the bell curve where we agree on most things. For instance, if you had somebody that was completely pro-choice and you could probably back them up to a place where they thought that uh, abortion after six months was not cool, I mean, maybe even three months. And then you get the radicals on the left that say, my body, my choice, right up to nine months. So those people you're not going to change, and those are the ones with the biggest voice right now. We're forgetting that the moderate middle will agree on, yeah, abortion's probably not a great thing. <laughs> I'm not looking to make it illegal or take away woman's choice. I'd like it to be rare, uncommon, and frowned upon because it's ending a life, and I love children. I want more of them. I love women. That's why I want more of them born. But the radical left will tell you, no, my body, my choice right up until nine months, and if you come from... 
was it uh, Northam in Virginia, Mayor, uh, Governor, said in, when he was asked a question on air, what happens if a baby, you know, survives an abortion? Well, we keep it comfortable and then we talk to the parents and the doctors and we decide what to do. Um, what? So I'm going to listen to this. I, I, I scanned through it last night quickly. Uh, I'm going to stop and start all the way through it so that you can hear what Laura Yip has to say live on the Tom McConnell Show on 610 CKTV. Joining us right now, she is St. Catharines Regional Counselor. Laura Yip, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. For those who do not follow you on social media, you've documented uh, a case of online harassment over the last couple of days. Can you outline exactly what happened here? So, um, on Sunday morning, I thought Sunday was going to be a much different day. Um, Sunday morning, I uh, opened up my laptop to find a message from someone who um, I have no idea who they are. with a message that said, you have a mouth on you, dot, 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 that is not fit for regional council. Um, and, you know, I know there are a number of people in the community who think, eh, so what, big deal. There's a, there's a sort of a violence in you have a mouth on you that uh, set me to, to shaking, frankly. Okay, so first off, what is it about... You got a pretty mouth. You got a bird of mouth. You got a mouth on you, young lady. You got a real mouth on you, young lady. You're not fit for regional council. I think you're fit. This is not my tweet. This is not my communication, not my post, not my DM. But how does you got a real mouth on you set you to shaking Unless you're fragile, like a little baby girl. <laughs> now, should I just stick? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really trying to stick to the topics and not get personal. Okay, let's let's reset that commitment. Okay. So, without getting personal. The victim card is being played quite a bit here. You'll see that. And uh, I guess that's all I got to say about that now. Um, The follow-up message was, we are watching. Um, And then it turned into a bunch of messages about, I, I still don't quite understand this. This individual is, I think, upset that I think marital rape is a bad thing. Um, which is a weird, weird thing. Anyway, I sent him a message and said, I don't, basically, I've not made any comments like this because he was carrying on. Um, I haven't made any comments like this. I'm not responding to any further messages. If you have a regional council issue, you can take it up with any one of 30 other regional councillors. And I left it. Um, and he continued. And what has happened is there is a, there's another individual who is... Um, <laughs> just weirdly fixated on me. Uh, uh, <laughs> my ears are burning. Laura, I am not fixated on you. You're a politician. I'm no more fixated on you than I'm fixated on, oh, I don't know, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, AOC, How about Nancy Pelosi? How about Maxime Waters? How about Governor Cuomo? Don Lemon? Chris Cuomo? (laughs) Or any of the Rachel Richard Maddow, as Mark Dice would say. Don't flatter yourself, Ms. Ip. I am. I think you know I'm not strangely fascinated or obsessed with you. And as you're going to learn, we were friends. <laughs> but here's the kicker: my politics changed. That's it. 
You can't be friends with the radical left if you're in the moderate middle. I'm a guy that doesn't hold his tongue very often, says what he thinks. I'm very political. So, yeah, Laura, yep. I don't think that you should be able to my body, my choice to the death of a child that's unborn. <laughs> Sorry. What, what, you don't need CNN, do you? You got enough entertainment here, don't you? <laughs> it's been three days of uh, piling on. Good old Jimmy Fannin again. I went through 45 days of it when I dropped the DFC comment on this young lady. Not probably appropriate or friendly or, you know, screaming out, be my friend. But it was a funny bit. And I do comedy. I am hilarious. And whether or not you find me entertaining or hilarious or just madly fixated on one individual that happens to be a woman, well, I don't think you know me. Where, what am I talking about now? Where were we going? What, what was she talking about? Oh yeah, I'm not fixing it on you, Laurel. Laurel, I'm a I'm a political addict. Okay, I am addicted. I do have a problem with social media. I cannot seem to get away. F I mean, I, I get away from it when I feel like it, but I, I just keep coming back. It's not about getting my name in the paper. It's not about well, it probably is about looking good. It's marketing. Okay, it's branding. And I do it half decently. I also have some takes and I'm not going to shut my mouth about them. So if you think the killing babies, unborn babies in the womb is a good, is, is cool. My body, my choice. If you support that up until nine months, we're not going to come to, we're not going to come to an agreement on that. Like I said, in the open. So no, Laura, here's the thing. Do I need to say this again? I like Laura Yip. She's bright. She's ideologically possessed. She's got a decent sense of humor. And I know this because I was tight with Laura Yip. Here's the deal. Before we go any further, maybe I should just say this from the outset. Early January 2014. What was it? Greg Washuda resigned. Or, or there was a seat open. I think it was Greg's seat. And the discussion was, and I was on 610 at the time. I was doing the Jim Fannin show. I, I didn't I didn't finish up that story quickly. When Peter Cormos died, Andy Petrowski was left without a co-host. Andy Petrowski was doing the show called The Region. Andy was the righty. Cormos was the lefty. It was a good show, whether you like Andy or not. When Cormos died, as a regular caller to Tommy's show, I called up and said, like, hey, who do I talk to about being the lefty for Andy Petrowski. Somebody needs to keep that cat in check. I knew who to talk to. So I got my, so I, so I went and did it. I got my appointment. I got my interview and then I got on air <laughs> and then I was okay at it. I mean, it's a difficult job, but I, I took, I, I, I took to it rather naturally. I really enjoyed it and I had fun doing it. On the spot, as my record was pretty good as a caller, a regular caller and a character and, a, you know, the caller of the year a few years, you know, because Tom used to run this thing, caller of the year. And we had our own little community from 9 to 12 on the Tom McConnell show where the callers knew each other. We had nicknames for each other. We roused each other. We grinded on each other. We mocked each other. We made fun of each other. And usually we talked about politics and the issues of the day. It was great. So as a caller, I had a track record. And so when I was sitting with the GM and the PD at that time, they said right on the spot, right in the, in the GM's office, give him his own show. Forget Andy. He can follow Andy with his own hour. Okay. I took it. Rick Dykstra, I think, was one of my first guests. Mayor McMullen was a first guest. I was rough in the beginning, man. You know, really anxious, pit-soaked. But I got better at it. And then I brought local talent in to play the uh, bumper music in and out. We had some great sessions, and most of them are lost now because my YouTube channel got canceled 
because of these people right here. And I'm talking to you, Laura. Yep. I'm not saying you specifically, but the lefties, the radicals targeted my Twitter accounts, targeted my YouTube channels. And oh, I'm, I'm on my third YouTube channel because I had Jim Fannin and I had Jim Fannin show and I had Team Niagara. And, you know, I've got Rocker Town. I've got accounts, right? Nature's Hampa used to have. So I'm on my third tr Twitter account and my fifth YouTube channel because every time I put something up that's on the borderline, I get, I get, you know, a community guideline strike. Somebody complained about it. You did that, people that support Laura Yip. I know. I'm, I, I'm a target. So I got my way on with my own show on Sunday from 1 to 2. Then Petrowski didn't get his uh, contract renewed. I took his hour. I was 12 to 2 on Sundays, working for uh, Contra. In, the in that industry, it's advertising. So basically, I got some free ads to run for Jim Fannin as a realtor that I cashed in years later. I think they were giving me $100 per show in Contra. I did 100 shows. And uh, I did a year and a half of Sundays, and then I became the guy that filled in for this guy right here, Tom McConnell. I filled in for Larry Fedoric. I filled in for Kevin Jack when he was there. I filled in for everyone except Tim Dennis because I didn't think people wanted to listen to me in the morning. I could make myself m vanilla. That's what you want in the morning. You want, you know, I don't want the cackling and the jerking off and all the, you know, the morning zoo. Uh, I want a guy that's mellow. He gives me the, you know, the weather and the news, what's going on local, right? So I didn't do the early morning show. I did everything else. I was the number one fill-in guy until I did a little bit about the Grape and Wine Festival. There was a guy that was the chair of the the board at the grape and wine and other people that sat on the board that weren't big fans of mine it was a great nine minute segment it's on itunes you can find it it's called grape and wine i think billy sadler's in the booth with me or somebody local musician it was my best work in my opinion and i really don't like my work this kind of stuff i'd rather be on the radio i think there's something really sexy about having a well-produced show for radio but here we are Similarly, my DFC bomb that I dropped because Laura Yip, here's where it all started. I became center right, moderate. The left didn't like it. I found the far left's takes like late term abortion abhorrent. So I called them out. So I'm pretty good at calling people out. I'm pretty good at trolling. I'm pretty good at debating and speaking. I come with facts. Most lefties don't want to talk to me anymore. That's fine. But when you're getting fact to death, maybe <laughs> I'm going to fact you to death. When you're getting fact to death, it hurts because you realize you don't have a position to stand in. So I'm not bad at this whole game. So I'm not here to pat myself on the back. We're going to listen to this little interview. Why did I stop it? I forget where I was going. But that's the history. I got fired from 610 CKTB because the GM wouldn't stand against me making fun of the Grape and Wine Festival. The Grape and Wine Festival was doing some contra with the station as far as access to the park. They lost that after that. So it was all for naught because they didn't keep their access to the park. Uh, C. or whoever got it, giant after that. Not probably because of me. So I got booted because I made fun of a local, a local festival, the Grape and Wine Festival. Gone. Nine-minute segment. And it's my best work. Similarly, the bomb that I dropped at the DFC on uh, Lori Yep because she kept tweeting, here's where it started. She had this proclivity for tw tweeting out 
posts that included the phrase, Jesus fucking Christ. Now, I don't use that language. I have a filthy mouth. I'm the first one to say that. And it's not because I'm all Christian and stuff like that. Like, I am a believer. But my faith is way stronger than to be offended by somebody saying Jesus fuck. It just curdles my blood. It makes my skin crawl. Whatever analogy you want to put to it, I don't like hearing it. It makes me... And uh, why is another thing. But it's not because I'm deeply Christian by any means. I just don't use the words. And sometimes if I'm in mixed company uh, in the opportunities there, and I think there's a conversation to be had, I'll ask if they're a believer. And if they say yes, then I'm like, eesh. You might, if you're a believer, then why do that? <laughs> you know? And if you're not, do you think it's disrespectful to anyone that does believe in anything? So Laura Yip had a proclivity. Love that word. I'm learning words. For t- tweeting out things that she was passionate about and including Jesus fucking Christ in there. And she would never spell Jesus right. It was like J-E-E-Z-U-S. So (laughs) talk about mocking a religion. So I am offended for everyone that has faith because I don't hear you talking about Muslims, you fucking hypocrite. I thought I was going to try and watch my language. I'm going to try and tone it down. You don't need fucking in there. The hypocrisy. I'm a hypocrite too. I get it. We're all hypocrites, but this is blatant and it's ugly. And I don't like you as an atheist being able to take the Lord's name in vain. Where That's what it's called. Without having to be accountable for it from the standpoint that I don't see you showing pictures of Muhammad. I don't see you talking disrespectfully of Jews, Muslims, or any other faith other than this one. So I had her on the show four years ago. You can find it. I guess she just came from a yoga workout. We had a date booked. We were friendly up until that point. She did tell me when she came in that she uh, had a lot of pushback by her left-wing friends that thought that it was a bad idea that she talked to me. I get it. I don't know. I guess I'm scary. Why? What the? Why? It wasn't a real productive conversation that nobody changed anyone's mind there. I think it was, it was okay. I've had better interviews. I've been red-pilled over the last five years. So in 2015 or 16 or something, I ran my last election as a Green Party candidate. I'm probably going to be politically active this federal cycle. I'm back. Sorry, bitches. I'm back. Now, sorry, bitches doesn't mean women. And it doesn't mean female dogs. It means all of you bitches. (laughs) So there's the history. I like Laura Yep. That's a long way to say I love Laura Yep. I've told her I love her. Many times. I love a lot of peeps. She's not dumb. (laughs) She's not dumb. (laughs) I want to apologize to Laura. Yep, for calling you a dumb fucking cunt. You're not dumb. Sorry. (laughs) I know that doesn't help. It's funny. Okay? I'm not sending a hit squad out like these people are. I got When I dropped the comment, a month later, I did a video. It was funny. It was very similar to this. It was me jacking around. I couldn't find her tweets because I had her on mute. I took about five minutes. I had a couple drinks in me. I had gone live unexpectedly after working on it for four hours. And boom, I'm live. So I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm going to do a show. I cruise my Twitter feed. Who's at the top? At Grantham Citizen. Who... Can you believe there was a movement to prove that I'm Grantham Citizen? 
the, the tweets aren't even similar at all. Anyways, he's gone now. He's bailed. I, ta- I texted him last time. I'm like, dude, where'd you go? He, he unfollowed everyone, and he's done. He says, I'm out. He was a really active voice, critical voice, and a conservative voice. He worked for the DSBN in St. Catharines. That's all we know about him. That's all. He would never reveal his identity. It. Grantham Citizen could have been. I, I see this guy as a man. I'm almost sure. Maybe he, uh, maybe he said as much as that. But anyway. A couple drinks. We're rolling. I do a little bit. It's funny. I'm having some fun. And you've probably, all the lefties have seen it because they, the rage bait sent them there. They put the link to the show, which is only on BitChute. I, I, I think I have it uploaded to my YouTube channels, but you know, it's not something I need to be promoting. It's just one of my bits. I should get it in the rotation. It's not in my uh, iTunes collection, so I must be self-censoring myself because I got hate mail for a month and a half after John Law called me and said, I want to talk to you about your video. I'm like, my video? What? Nobody, the media doesn't call to talk to me about videos. Oh, the one on Laura Yeb. I'm like, oh, brother. I had seen some bubbling on Twitter about it. Somebody had sent me some stuff because I don't really follow local guys. Look at me. I'm going to make this into a, like a fucking two-hour show. My recording? Thank goodness. 27 minutes already? No, but does anyone fuck? <laughs> does anyone care about this? I'm trying to watch my mouth a little bit. There's no need for it. I love it because I think it's funny used in the right measure and frequency. I like, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) COVID much? I like Laura Yip. I've told Laura Yip, like my other girlfriends and boyfriends, men and women alike, that I love them. So I'm sure that she might not be feeling my love right now, but... She's a good woman. There's no, you know, there's, no, I disagree with her ideological possession and what she represents as a far left radical. She's not a bad person. She's bright. She's resourceful. She's just ideologically possessed. That's it. That's where it ends. Here, Laura, I called you three times. Okay. I left you voicemails because I, I figure, you know what, when you're, when you're a jackass to your friend, maybe you should just call up and go, ah, fuck, I'm a jackass. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was doing this thing. I don't take it back. It's, you know, a snapshot in time for me. It was just a couple drinks talking local politics. I got carried away. It's funny. I know you don't think it is, but I was having fun. <laughs> You see me the whole bit. It's 40 minutes. It's beginning to end. It's nothing but Jimmy Fan and jerking around. It's funny, okay? That's what we do here. That's what I do. I do politics, and I bring it in a way that's hopefully entertaining for me. <laughs> if I ever watch my stuff, I don't normally watch my stuff. Okay, let's get There's the history. I don't know that I need to interrupt all that much more. That's the history. I like Laura Yip. We were tight. Oh, this is what I didn't touch up on. January 2014, there's an opening in council. I'm on the radio at the time. Did I tell you how I got on the radio? No, I'm kidding. Guess who is a guest of mine on the radio? It's the same person that was, uh, okay, so here, here's the deal. Council seat opens up. Council starts talking about having a by-election. Or do we just appoint the third runner-up? Or do we leave the seat open until the next election? So there's a few months left in the term. You don't need to see, leave the seat open. It's not, there's no reason for that. It's way too late to have a by-election before the next general election. So why just, 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 just appoint the third runner-up? Who's the third runner-up? Laura, yep. All right, what's her resume? Who cares? She's the third runner-up. Plug her in. But then I started becoming impressed by her, you know? And then I started to support her as a friend off the air. So I had her on the air a couple times. And, and hey, I've got all the texts 
to prove it. I have the receipts, people. I have every text since the first text I sent Laura Yep in 2015, 2014, if you can believe that. So I'm able to see the election of mayor. Oh, there's a federal election. Yeah, oh, we were chatty then. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. You're on my show four years ago. I was her biggest fan and supporter. Plug her in. I had her on the radio from the 1st to the 28th when she was appointed by council. We were toit. Best friends almost. Strategy. You know? She doesn't have, at the time, she had no political instincts at all. Probably still doesn't. I shouldn't say that. She's, she knows how to make news for herself, right? That's a political instinct. And a damn important one, too. So keep it up. But playing the victim card is getting old, Laura. I'm not targeting you. I'm not calling for your harassment. If people use tweets of mine where you call Jordan Peterson, yes, one of the greatest thinkers of our time, and yes, he's not a moron. He's a clinical psychologist. He's got two best-selling books. He's a, he, he lectures on psychology at the U of T. He's a professor. He's fucking brilliant. Now, whether or not you believe that you should, you know, clean your room and make your bed before you go off into the day because it makes the world a better place, I don't have any problems with that. If you if you think that he mocks LGBT community, LGBT community or, or disrespects them by not using preferred pro pronouns and mandated speech, that's what he came to power, you know, how he became popular. Great, that's fine. But he's not a moron. Here's where it all starts. I'm feeling my oats a little bit, I think. A federal election is coming, and I'm seriously considering running. Not for the Greens. Not for my buddy's party. None of the above party. And if you watch my segments before, you know what I'm talking about. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> but I'm getting wound up. This is where I start. Um, who had gone back and found a tweet of mine from three and a half years ago. Um, in, it was in response to something that Jordan Peterson said, and this individual who posted it said, oh, this left-wing radical feminist is criticizing one of the greatest thinkers of our time. Which, I mean, if you think Jordan Peterson is one of the greatest thinkers of our time, that's, there's probably a discussion that needs to be had there. Um, but the tweet was about, Jordan Peterson was saying, this is, this is why sex should be enshrined in marriage, and he was talking about um, abusers. And I made a, a sarcastic remark about, yes, let's go back to when marital rape was legal. Um, and so for whatever reason, the individual that is weirdly fixated on me and is constantly tweeting about me, posting things to Facebook, has made videos, this sort of thing, uh, went and found this tweet, posted it. It set this individual off who started messaging me on Sunday morning. And I decided, you know, I've put up with the abuse and the harassment for nearly every day for more than two years. Most of the time it's anonymous. Um, every now and then someone is brave slash stupid enough to find line to attach their name to it. And so I thought, you know what, if you're going to send me messages like this, I'm going to show everybody that you're sending me messages like this. Um, and so I posted, I posted the screenshots that set him to, um, start making accusations about me bullying him, um, that I'm playing the victim card, that I'm a whiner. Um, it continued. I was still getting messages this morning. I called the police. Now he's upset on his social media that I have wasted taxpayer resources um, by sending the police out to talk to him. That's sort of it in a nutshell. Can I ask? I guess I'll just let it roll here. This is, uh, we're four minutes into a 16 minute interview on 610 CQDB. I put this shot up because I think it's interesting to see that CNN still has the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> Do you have nothing else for news, dudes? 
Anyways, I will uh, stop and start as we roll here if I find anything amusing or, I don't know, something I should uh, discuss. Ask, is he one of your constituents or not? I don't Do you think know? so. I don't think so. I think he lives in Welland. Okay. All right. So he reached out to you for what reason originally? Did he just say, oh, out so of the blue, I, you have a mouth on you? you? Well, yeah. I mean, months ago, I received a few messages from him asking for me to make changes to laws, um, like actual like law enforcement kinds of things. And way back then, I said, you know, I, I replied and I said, I appreciate that this is, this is a concern for you. In this particular case, you would have to take it up with the federal government and contact your MP. Then there was another issue. He had an issue about Halloween. Um, and I said, you'll need to take this one up with your MPP. And so uh, hadn't heard from him since. And then he, um, the, the first message that I saw from him the other morning was, you have a mouth on you. Um, and it was in response to um, this tweet from three and a half years ago, which I mean, for the record, I stand by that tweet. Jordan Peterson is a moron. That's what I said in the tweet. <laughs> well, in three and a half years, it's interesting what what uh, sort of or. So what if he's a moron? Isn't that disparaging to somebody that's a moron? That's not very sensitive and inclusive and tolerant, Ms. Yip. I, I have nothing other than that deal, and I don't want to get down that road. Jordan Peterson has gone through a, a, a some sort of <laughs> process over the last three and a half years. That he's gone through some. I things, don't. Yeah, he's gone through some things. I'll leave it. Wow, find this entertaining at all? Do you have an idea of what Tom's talking about? Is the fact that Jordan Peterson has come off a of benzo dependency? It almost killed him. He's been off the market for over two years. He just barely got his book out. He audio voices the book. He narrates the book. And he sounds in the first chapter like he's almost dead. Like it nearly killed him. He had a, a, a reaction or an interaction with an SSRI he was taken for depression. What does Laura Yip, this I'm here for everyone type of mantra that she struts around all the time. Where's her compassion for a guy that almost was killed by a drug interaction because he treats his depression? She's actually giggling. They're making light of the fact that, yeah, one of the greatest thinkers and communicators of our time, whether you agree with him or not, it's widely accepted that he is one of our deep thinkers, one of the great thinkers. It's only whack jobs like you, Laura. Yep. Sorry, now I'm going back to the personal stuff. But it, it there's only whack jobs on, on your side of the political spectrum that thinks he's dangerous somehow. We're not. We're not buying it. We are not buying it. But there. Now, yeah. getting back to your issue. Really funny, though. And, 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 uh -huh. and, and I know people have... have really and, funny, you know, Laura. What I face as a talk show host is completely different because, you know, I, I'm set up for that in terms of people may not like what I have to say. Okay, no problem. But some people would say, well, why didn't you just ignore it? But you, I, I would say, have you not ignored it up to this point? I have like, ignored so much of it. And this is the... So much of it. What, words? So much of what? People criticizing you? No one's calling for your stoning. No one's saying we should burn you at the stake. No one's coming by your house. No one's threatening you or your children or your ex-husband. It's not happening, Laura. This is nothing more than you saying, look at me. Poor me. Because you do want to run next time. And this is building your war chest. And it is galvanizing support for your far left radical supporters. It's, it's crystal clear to see the transparency here. 
This is a woman that said she wasn't going to comment on any of my comments, my comedy bit that I did, for lack of a better term, my political commentary with bad language in it. She wasn't going to comment on it until John Law called her, and then she's like, oh, oh my God. I guess the high road got buried. What a flaming hypocrite. This is the thing, and I mean, like, I can't win. I can't, it doesn't matter what I do, I can't win. If I ignore you know, it. And this is part of, like, <laughs> victim culture. I can't, have you heard anything so helpless as someone that says, I can't win. Everything I do is wrong. What are you, a petulant child? You sound like one. <laughs> Sorry. I should be calling it out and making it public. If I call it out, then I'm whining and I should ignore it. If I call the police, right, then I'm wasting taxpayer resources. If I don't call the police, it's not serious enough. Um, you know, the, like the bottom line is everybody just wants everybody. I shouldn't say everybody. The kinds of people who ga engage in this behavior, they want me to shut up. That's their big issue. I mean, the number. Oh, Laura, we don't want you to shut up. We actually, I'd like, I can only speak for me because <laughs> like, you really think people are taking my direction? I hope I'm providing in information, maybe, you know, uh, an opposite viewpoint. No one wants you to shut up, Laura. What we want you to do is be effective at your job. Even if I don't support your effectiveness, even if you're working with the will of counsel, on leftist ideology as far as what you're putting up in your, uh, you know, agenda, I still support you as being a powerful leader in our community, even if I don't support your agenda. No one, I don't, I don't want you to shut up, Laura. I want you to be an effective regional counselor. Yeah. I want you to have the best interest of all of the population of Niagara Region, not just people in St. Catharines, because you're elected there, of all people in St. Catharines, even ones that are critical of you, Laura. We don't want you to shut up. We don't want you to go away. We want you to do your job and stop pissing and moaning. The number of emails that I get that are variations of just shut up is staggering. Um, like, and, and this, is, this is the other, the frustration is, you know, people say, oh, you shouldn't participate. Don't respond to them. I'm not. I actually, I've, I've started in the last several months when people start sending me messages like this, I reply one single time. And that one single time is to say, you know, I'm not responding to you. You can contact 30 other people if you have an issue. Um, right. Like, right. So they're aware. They are aware that they are not going to get a response from me. Um, and so, you know, no one can even say, well, you know, you didn't tell them that they couldn't send you these messages. Well, no, I suppose I didn't tell them they couldn't send me these messages, but I did tell them I'm not responding. Um, if I block people on social media, then I'm like shutting down democracy. Um, if, if I don't block them, then I, you know, I, and again, that's that I can't. There shouldn't, this shouldn't even be a thing that we're concerned about whether I'm winning or not. But I can't win. No matter what I do, it's the wrong response to someone. Victim culture. I'm a woman, therefore I am a victim. I'm a woman, therefore I am vulnerable by the man. Laura, I don't know why you think this is so funny. And back when Laura and I were friends, when she would go on the radio after I was fired and we were still friends, I would tell her, to stop cackling. Stop with the cackling. You're not Tammy Jennerette. It's not funny. You're not funny. So don't laugh on air. It's bad radio. Now, unless you're doing a funny bit and the laughter is funny, don't use it as a crutch. Try to stop with the, I know, right? And the Tommy's, what's, what's Tommy's? Okay, no problem. Okay, no problem. Okay, no problem. And I'm like, and I'm like, 
and they're like, and she's like, and they're like, and I'm like, and they're like, and I'm like, and I'm like, I know, right? Bally girl. It's fucking gross. So we're our friends. I'd say, Laura, this is probably where it went wrong. I haven't looked at this on my phone. Laura Yep was on with Kevin Jack. They were talking about sexual assault. She was cackling, laughing, whatever you want to call it. I texted her, sexual assault, hilarious. That's pretty much the beginning of the end for us. I'm pretty sure. Speaking of the beginning of the end, uh, what? <laughs> you know those people that you look at and you go, <sighs> this girl? Over there, <laughs> in the corner there. <sighs> I don't know. She's a horrible broadcaster, and she's just got a look that makes me go. <clears throat> I know. I know. I'm working on it. I'm trying. Believe it or not, I'm getting better. Just not at a real rapid pace. God bless me, please. Stay with me, kids. I'm going somewhere. I need your support. <laughs> Speaking of support, I just had a follower on Twitter ask me how he could support me. And I told him that I have a Patreon account over at patreon.com slash free speech that's never been used before. I don't have a monthly sub. I've never been given a donation. Don't know how it works. I think it's connected. So as we work on True.Tube, it turns out I need a, w a shit ton, way more resources than I thought I'd need, which means money, if I want a pirate ship. True.Tube will be the pirate ship, where you won't have to worry about uh, me being censored and uh, where you have to pay to see the good stuff. The shitty stuff we'll, we'll put out for free, but the good stuff will be behind the paywall, and I'm going to see if I can... Get more than 10 subscribers a month. That's the plan. Patreon.com slash free speech. I don't normally do um, commercials or ask for donations. And frankly, I'm not asking. But if you like what you see and you feel like you want to give, like this guy on Twitter did, I'm not going to out him. But shoot me a donation on PayPal at realestate at teamniagara.ca. Realestate at teamniagara.ca. And now. Back to your regularly scheduled program. Laura, yep, on the Tom McConnell show. Yesterday, he said, you know, when people read this story, they're going to ask, why don't you call the police? And I said, first of all, it never meets the threshold. It never meets the threshold. They walk right on up to the line. but they uh, I, See, I don't have notes for this. I should have notes. If it never meets the threshold, then you don't call the police and insist that they go talk to somebody because they put words on the internet about you. Yeah, it is a waste of resources. So if it never meets the threshold, then don't call police. Is this... This is too easy. And... Maybe I'll do a separate segment. Maybe I'll save these both for Thursday night. I don't know. It's Wednesday tonight. I have a whole other segment on the pylon. <laughs> Coming from the Laura Yip supporters. I took a 45 days when the first bit dropped and the fake news came out. I wonder if I put out a... Uh, uh, message to John Law like hey you want to do a follow up on that original piece that you did you know that 20 minute interview I gave you that suddenly weirdly the only quotes that came up are stuff like well yeah kind of the first to admit I have a hard time placing my hate in positive places yeah I said that it was the first thing we said you know as a like a hello I guess there is no off the record with John Law. 
Hey Jim, how you doing? Well, I guess you know I could uh, find a better place to put my head. I guess I guess come on. That was like the lead quote in the article. Hey John, you want to do a follow up? You want to interview me for real? No, I'll just sit out here and do it. Don't worry about it. They don't cross it. Um, and I said to Bill, the problem is, so it doesn't meet the threshold, and then people will accuse me of wasting resources. Like, do you want me to call the police three times a week about this stuff? I don't think you do. Then, this morning, it continues, and I... Well, that might be the only thing I agree with Lori up on here. No, we don't want you calling the cops because people put words on the internet about you. No, we don't. You're right. I don't think we do. So stop it. <laughs> I go, you know what? I am going to call the police. <laughs> and I call the police, and then people go, ah, you're wasting taxpayer because resources. Because you are. Like, and the, it, amazing th- the, the amazing thing is, as well, they're, they're, and, and people don't believe it. But, uh, do we have a low threshold for amazing? I know I'm being very literal here, and it's not meant to be But in terms that way. of... A double standard here. Oh. That- yeah, here's the double standard. You can say whatever you want about anyone, Lori, yet, but when somebody says mean words about you, you're a fucking threatened victim. There are colleagues on your council who will say anything about any subject. Yep. Apparently, and get nothing back except a few claps. Oh, good and for you. <laughs> and, the, and, and as a female... I, I just can't imagine, right, that just sharing an opinion is so triggering. Tom, who's triggered? Sharing an opinion? Sh- what are we talking about here now? Sharing an opinion. What? On my body, my choice, up until birth? That's completely a, gem- a legitimate point to debate yeah. for people that they want their politicians to be what silent and compliant no we want them to be effective and we want them to stop whining every time they get a bad word put in their inbox right like, yeah well, right I, think this is, I mean this is part of what frustrated right? me last night is because first of all a lot of people say oh it's not about gender point me to where it says anything in that message about gender it's, it's not about gender It's about you being a left-wing ideologue that shoots her mouth off about things that people don't agree with. So when they express their anger and disappointment and, I don't know, a different point of view, eat it. Take it, Laura. It doesn't need to have the word. You're going to call the cops? You sent the cops to this man's house. His, His children think he's going off to jail. You know what? I got some threatening messages from you shock jock wannabe um basement dweller that's that's not kind that's hurtful maybe i should call the cops word gender in it or the word woman in it or any of that to be about gender the other message that we get is because well it's the not men about gender well here's the thing the men the men who are willing to even engage with me and other women politicians on this subject, they have clearly publicly stated in council meetings, on social media, in traditional media, they do not get anywhere near. Anecdotal. Chris Biddle gets it. Trust me. Jim Diodati gets it. Trust me. Um, Walter Sensick, he gets it. Trust me. From men and women alike. That does not mean we are targeting a politician because of their gender. It's called sex. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It's your political position we're attacking. You dolt. That's not political. That's not very nice either. Make another fucking video about that one. The volume? I mean, another, uh, you could make another, you know, a big uh, little podcast or harasses woman calls her adult recounts the time he said dfc or the type of messages of this kind that we do (sighs) this isn't even half over i'm over this 
Have Maybe I said all I need to say? Time to pay attention to the women. Maybe listen to the men. Yeah. Sorry. We're not listening to either one of you. Well, and, little, and, and, and you just up. see. Sorry. Right. Well, well, I can up. see why. Right? Why? That, that why, you Tom? deal with such BS. Why? And BS? You deal with people and. and uh, you deal with people. So in this position, I get a couple of. It, it's interesting. Yeah, Tom, no Most cares people, position, when you okay? respond. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. Well, yeah, say it's the same. It is yeah. nowhere near it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. Right? It is, the, it is the not close. Just let her talk. Oh, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need so to feel threatened. To there were a couple of them this morning that sounded hilarious that I said in the in the story with Bill that, you know, whether it meets the threshold for criminal charges to be threatening, is it's completely different than if it makes me feel unsafe. That shouldn't be funny to you. Making me feel unsafe. It's not our responsibility to make sure you feel safe in the political arena, Laura Yip. Man the fuck up. <laughs> It's not our responsibility, Laura. Let it roll off your back or get out of politics because you obviously don't have the thick skin for this game. Or just victim culture is going to take you to the top. I don't know. Unsafe shouldn't be funny, right? And you I think it's funny that you feel unsafe because somebody said we're watching you. We are watching you. I'm watching you, Laura. I'm not sitting out your house in my car waiting for you to come out. We're watching you. We're watching what you do on social media. We watch what you do at city at regional council. Yes. We're watching Laura. Ooh, I'm fucking scared myself you there. Know, like, <laughs> I, I, you've met me, you've seen me. I'm not a, I'm not a big person. Yeah, I'm not I've met you, I've seen you. You're a, you're a half pint as compared to a pint. Yeah. That makes you afeard? Relatively small human. Um, <laughs> if, if one of these guys, and there are a couple that I am quite seriously concerned could turn violent. What? How? Based on what, Laura? You're concerned that a couple of us put me in the category since the, I'm the one that trolls you and makes memes and puts tweets and we haven't even I should probably pull up the tweet eh hey, what do you think eh fuck you wanna go for a get a 2-4 there fuck hey guy hey guy yeah I should show you the tweet there fuck and if one of them does I I got nothing like Yeah, you don't, because you're a girl. You're a woman. Most women don't fight well with men. Most men don't attack women, so you should be okay, despite mean words on the internet. I, I have no hope against some of these guys. Nor should yeah. you be concerned that they're and, coming and, after and, you. And a day, and and, and listen, and, this and, is, and, and, it's all upon the uh, spectrum, uh, the uh, continuum, uh, of you will, of, of you will threatening harassing Continuum? to violence against females there's no violence what? tom we're not threatening it's not violence tommy quit giving oxygen to this bushfire look at look at the british politician right yeah. who was just a woman and was killed for that and i'm looking yep. at the news today about adam strong was convicted of two murders against women that there is a 19 year old boy who stabbed 19 year old man who stabbed a, 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 a 17 year old girl in an edmonton high school that a british okay, if, what are you talking about how is this even relevant yes most men commit most violent crimes but most crimes aren't on women you dolt double d woman went missing and a police officer a police officer in yeah. britain is accused of her death right like violence yeah. against women doesn't have to be specific in the worst kind for us not to be concerned about it and that and it is part of a continuum and a spectrum women. that's right and it's part because of a they're continuum women right and, and you can't spectrum. tell me that this, uh, this what the fuck are you talking about tommy tommy come correct please tommy i'm not quite sure what you're saying behavior won't or can't escalate. We see it all the time. As
There's no escalation. There's no call for your, you know, you know what they call, you know what they say. There's no call for your, you know. What the call is for is for your integrity, for your lack of hypocrisy, and for you to start being what you preach, which is tolerant and inclusive. That includes people that disagree with you, Laura. As you just listed, right? Like, and, right. and I mean, you know, less than that, you you know, know, like, again, because these right. people don't care. But it's completely disruptive 16 for me and my life rush. and my children and their dad. Like, I, I haven't. Okay. No one's talking about your children. No one's talking about your ex-husband. Okay? Like, stop bringing family into this because nobody brought your family into this. No one's saying, hey, you should... Uh, they're not even saying look over your shoulder. But that, is that threatening? Watch your back? <sighs> Rob Gill, the Death Star, has risen. Rob Gill was trolling Douglas Bison. Uh, he was the guy that quoted, that screenshotted my tweet of, um, I think that I thought this was going to be a separate show or probably I was just being lazy instead. Let me see if I can find it here. First of all, I'll give you something to watch while I do that. A distraction is what it's called, a diversion. Uh, yeah, there we go. We'll give you some Fox News for a second. I don't think I'll get copyright strikes for this. Uh, I think I'm almost done here. Uh, where is my Laura Yip tweet? Okay, Twitter. I'm going to need a break here. A bathroom break soon, kids. It's ironic that feminists claim to be pro-choice. They literally have hundreds of different conception choices, yet they end up pregnant and claim they have no other choice to abort. How fitting is this, that this just came up in my feed, tweeted about a half an hour ago. Hmm. No one. I love you. That's all I've got. Absolutely. I don't care. Marry me. That's it. Oh, this... This is actually, how come, where's my Twitter account? How come this isn't following? Unfollow, oh, okay. Yeah, I am following, okay, good. Uh, where was I going? I was going somewhere else. You wanna see commercials? Oh, shit. I should probably just show you, uh, it's eerily similar, this broadcast to the original one I did when I was screwing around trying to find her tweets and I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I really got to go to the bathroom. CNN, what do you got? You got something for me? Come on. Do me a solid. Oh, shit. There's commercials on every freaking channel. All right, well, at least this, this will give you something. Okay, so I'm going to go try and find the uh, the original post. Oh, shoot. I don't have a search bar because I've used too tight. Okay. Oh, you know what? We definitely need to take a break. Um, oh, we'll just cruise our feed. That's all we need to do. All right, so here's the tweet. Um, it's three and a half years old, as Laura Yip has been so eloquent in stating repeatedly that she tweeted something three and a half years ago, and it's being dug up on her. Well, welcome to cancel culture, young lady. So, Jordan Peterson, in relation to the Louis C.K. episodes, and let me remind you, I'm not sticking up for Louis C.K., but he had consent from the women that he pulled his junk out on, right? 
He liked to ask women if they minded if he would take out his uh, his stuff and play with it in front of them. And they said yes. <laughs> so anyways, Jordan Peterson, 2017, November 10th, says with all the accusations of sex assault emerging, e.g. Louis C.K., we are going to soon remember why sex was traditionally enshrined in marriage. Jordan Peterson puts a high value on, you know, having sex in a committed relationship, in a marriage, rather than outside it. I'm not sure how she, her milady, jumps to this. Ooh, maybe we can also go back to the days when it was legal for a husband to rape his wife. Hashtag moron. I think we already discussed the intellectual capacity of Jordan Peterson. He's no dummy. He's one of the greatest thinkers of our day. That's not just me saying it. I mean, he's made an impact on my life as far as knowledge goes. I understand the, the personality types now. I understand the narcissistic personality disorder a lot better because of that. And the uh, self-authoring program is great. The knowing yourself uh, test is awesome for $9. You can figure out where you are on the, on the spectrum of the big five personality types. So because I'm thinking, and this is where we ended off before we came to this, because I'm thinking of running in the next federal election, I think I'm just getting warmed up. And these guys are giving me all the pub I need. And it's funny and it's trolling. So this is what I pick up. I pick up her old tweet. I screenshot it. I don't retweet her. Um, that might be cowardly. I don't know. Far left radical feminist trolls, one of the greatest thinkers of our time. Trolling she, he, her milady is harassment. Isn't a tolerant left sexy? Sticks and stones, Laura. Remember? Clown world emojis. So this is it. This is what caused the ruckus. And so when Douglas Bison engages Laura and says, how dare you talk about men that way as if it's okay for a man to rape his wife or nobody's raping their wives. Okay. Very few of us like below 1%. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Probably about the percentage of people that, uh, I don't know, um, die from the coronavirus. Anyways, we're getting off track here. This is the tweet that Douglas Bison screen captures and leaves in Laura's direct messages when he's telling her that she's not worthy of being on council, that she's got a, a mouth on her, which is, I don't know somehow harassment um, do we need to even get back to you know this whole video here like it's almost done we might as well hear the end of it done today for my actual job but because I've been so so focused on this and what to do about it oh and yeah I must be consuming about, your whole is life there a potential danger when I called the police they said to me you know I know that you don't know who this person is, but keep your windows and doors locked. Do that. <laughs> like, like they're laying out the things that I need do to do. Do the things that you do to make already. Sure I stay safe. Keep your right? windows These and guys doors are locked. Upset because like, I'm normally I'm you don't. Crying and whining and calling the police and crying and whining about, and calling oh, the police is exactly what you're doing, Laura. If you don't want any of that to happen, you notice. Stop see, doing it. You know what the left is doing because they accuse you of doing it. And how many times has she contradicted herself in this interview? It doesn't rise to the level of criminal harassment, period. But you called the cops anyway. Stop sending me these messages. Listen, block him. Simple. Soon as you don't want to talk, I don't block people. Very rarely. I think it shows weakness. I think it shows that you can't put up with 
the conversation or the friendship or what have you. So that's not me, but that we're not talking about me. Laura, if you have communication that's coming into your inbox that you're not appreciative of, block them. Problem solved, period. But no, you want to go on a PR campaign Oh, because there's an election coming up. You always want to be thinking about how to get reelected. The first rule of politics, <laughs> acquire and maintain power. <laughs> first two rules of politics. Mike, like, if you're mad because people are supporting me because I'm putting this out there, stop sending me the messages to put out there. We're not, we don't care what you put out there. You can screenshot our messages all you want. I I do not have Anon accounts anywhere. I want my name attached to everything I say in print and here. I don't play the in the Anon troll game. I never have. Ever. One of the things that I know about you is that you are willing to engage on political discussions. No, wrong, Tommy. Tommy, you are like babying this girl. Kid gloves. This woman doesn't want to talk to anyone but what who's in her echo chamber. She seeks to cancel anyone that disagrees with her. Mayor Bilsma. All lives matter. He's a Christian. They sanctioned him. The integrity commissioner. Led by Laura Yip. You're not, eng- she doesn't welcome conversation, Tommy, just like you don't. Fuck, you won't even take my calls on the radio station anymore as a caller. I called to wish Tommy a Merry Christmas on air the day before he left for the Christmas break. He left me on hold for 20 minutes and went to other callers and then ended the show. So Tommy, like, I get it. Okay. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. There was a time when we were pretty tight. I thought I could count on a guy like you, but apparently not. With a a lot of people. 100%. Even those who... Talk to anyone. You know what? We may have a different point of view. You know what, Tom? You say, you know what? An awful lot. You know what? And I'm like, you know what? And... Here's why I think and and, and and we can come to some sort of accommodation that you have not been shy about engaging and having a dialogue and conversing, debating, disagreeing Bullshit. with people on subjects Bullshit, because Tommy. they're just ideas. Yeah. But there is, you know, for those who are like, oh, oh yeah, you know, that's now me. I can't even talk to her. And I'm like, well, I've talked to you dozens of times over the years, and you've always been willing to debate and engage on the subject. Wrong. So I, I, Fake I news, Tommy. I just want to make Tommy. sure people understand. Fake news. You're not shutting down debate because you're a woman. Um, yeah, she is. All sorts of conversations. No uterus, no opinion. What the fuck do you call that, Tommy? I had a conversation. And other female politicians. Yeah, I had a conversation with someone today. It was quite a lengthy telephone conversation. She had a number of concerns about vaccines and everything else, all that fell within provincial jurisdiction. And I oh, did my hero. best to provide her all of the information that I could. And when she I'm finished so the phone call with you, me, Laura. she said, well, I'm not any happier about this, but at least now I'm aware of what's been happening. That is a reaction I get a lot of times in my conversations. Yeah. <laughs> People are not any happier. What is so funny? But I, I appreciate you trying to inform me. I'm like, thank right. you. All right. Yep. So, and that's I can do no better than great, that. Eh? Important. All of the abuse this is that just I've a taken has big been personal. Masturbation session on air, basically. And because it's all men. That's the other thing. Some of them are like, oh, well, I'm sure. It's <laughs> Take your too. fingers out of your women. puppet. It's never been women. Stop <laughs> it. Um, they're okay. upset about things that I'm saying. Uh, are we going anywhere with this? I am in the basement, literally and figuratively from the standpoint that, like I am in so much pain today. And this is the last thing I wanted to be doing. But I think if I don't do it now, I won't be ready. I'll we'll probably play this for tomorrow night's show because um, I'm busy tomorrow night. I can't go live. So this is going to be my segment, I guess. Happy Thursday night to y'all. 7 p.m. Thursday nights, we're here. Almost every week. My role as a regional counselor or 
you know, they're saying things about my children or they're say, like... Nobody's saying is, anything about your children. Show us anywhere that we've said anything. Like uh, what, 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 what am I saying we? <laughs> Who's ever said anything about your half Asian children? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting a call. Admit. <clears throat> decision that I made at regional council, that's fine. You're going to pull up something from three and a half years ago before I was a regional councillor, before my name was even on a ballot, and say, this is not appropriate conduct. For uh, Yeah, I did. We are watching you. We have been for a long time. And... Well, uh, he, here's where the beginning of this started for me, okay? One, I think I'm preparing to be a federal candidate. Two, I want to draw attention to the fact that I called you a dumb fucking cunt in context, and I have the clip here. I'm going to play it for the first time <laughs> on YouTube and risk that I get a strike. So it's in context. Every time it gets quoted, it's just, oh, he called her a cunt. Well, no, it's ya dumb fucking cunt. Have you never seen Ricky Gervais? It's not a sexual thing. It's got nothing to do with your privates. You dumb fucking cunt. Stop it. <laughs> Look at dumb fucking cunt. A regional counselor. First of all, yes, it was. I think it's fine for a regional counselor to be opposed to marital rape. Um, but what? All- Dude, see what... Uh, I'm speechless. <laughs> All men are opposed to marital rape, dude. We're <laughs> so it's before I was even on regional council. So let yeah. So what? So what? Now that you're on regional council, you're breaking the conduct code of conduct all over the place. Shandor, what? You got time to comment on this, brother? Thanks for chiming in. in. I know it's late, so hey, how are you? Thank you very much for coming in. Are you, and we're doing a recorded dude, thing. Is that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're rolling now. I'm just going to go out unedited, but uh, I appreciate. Hey, hey. First, let me say, how's my audio? Yeah, it sounds pretty, sound okay. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I'm going to turn you up a little bit here. First, let me say, I can you hear me? You got screen sharing? Are no, screen sharing no, I'm with? not screen sharing. I don't have you on camera. It's just my perf- my perfect, my picture and then the background is uh well i can show you what i'm sharing or no yeah, yeah I can, let's I can see it if i can i can show you let's what I'm see sharing. it if i can i'd like to see what we're looking at on screen i can show you, you what tweets? i'm sharing homie you got people calling for your arrest yeah i know hey eh? it's exciting i, I worked i worked with vicky fagan got nothing else in my life you okay. employed me for uh <laughs> briefly for a contract graphic design mm. We kind of all, all of us would kind of know each other for years in this weird way. Like I've, I've not, not closely, but I've known Carrie Porter, uh, for 14 years or something like, wow. or 12 years. You know, and we and used I, to go to the same Strega cafe. Yeah. We used to go to Mate. I was friendly I with having a lot an of argument these people. With her about, um, it was about Gaza and the local protesters were planning on protesting the MP, uh, Dykstra. And they had this big poster. So this poster with the graphic design, it had the word Gaza dripping in blood. And I'm like, this is kind of a weird reason to meet up with your friends. Yeah. To go and stand outside of an MP's office and just hang out with your friends and and, and take a side in a, in a, in a foreign war. Mm-hmm. And so I made all these points. And, and, and so I, I think that Carrie Porter has been observant of and aware of my, of my existence for, for at least that long. She, I think she said at the time that I had given up because I had, I had been anti-war, but by taking the position I took, by not a, by not joining them in protest in the Gaza, this was like 2014. Uh, okay, let's come back to the issue at hand. I don't want to get sidetracked too much here because this is going to be a freaking four-hour video if I keep going down these roads. I'm trying to keep it tight. Okay, okay. and and let's they, do it. okay. So what focused. I was trying to say, yeah, my only you, point so is rudely, that we, all, we all know each other for years, including you knowing Laura for oh, years, including. Yeah. Biggest fan, biggest supporter wow. since day one. Uh, so what I was trying to say, I was trying to acknowledge you, which is probably why you cut me off because you're probably you're probably incapable ex- of accepting love and appreciation from a guy like me. <laughs> no, I appreciate your friendship. Number one, I appreciate your um, objectiveness. I think that you call it like you see it, strikes and balls, similar to me. Um, 
I fought hard to get out of my left wing ideology that I was uh, that I was mixed up in. But the left wasn't also cuckoo crazy cocoa for cocoa puffs when I was part of it. So I'm proud of myself that I've come uh, full circle or at least moderately right. But I appreciate your friendship and what you do. So Likewise. thank you for having my thank back you. and taking time to come on my shows and talk about. I know what, I should be some, doing my own thing, but I'm on yeah, Twitter seeing you get abused. I know. I see that. So, and so I'm not going to stand for that. It's appreciated. So I just played the interview. Uh, I, I've got, I've been rolling now for uh, oh an hour and 20 minutes. Excuse me. I played the interview. I stopped and started and we talked about it. Uh, now I think obviously we're done with that. She, she was wrapping up, but it, it's, it's ridiculous. But now I, and you can see that I'm sharing with you now, Miss Carrie Porter, who I was quite friendly with last time I saw. Uh, and I must say anytime I was with Laura Yip or I took her out or she was in my car or I picked her up at her house, get the door, walk her out to the door, up to the door, like the perfect gentleman, because that's how I roll. Carrie Porter and I stood at the bar at the warehouse not long ago, I, I don't know when it, what show we were seeing, My Son the Hurricane or whatever, had a great talk, chat. T- I mean, I thought it was a reasonable chat because I'm a reasonable guy. And uh, everything was really um, courteous. But since I've gone crazy right wing, then uh, they're out of my life. Uh, and they hate me. So here, can you see? I'm scrolling down here. Uh, one recent. And likewise. Her. Recent and likewise for myself. Yeah. Recent harassment of Councillor Yip can be tracked back to Jim Fannin. His bizarre hatred of her and his misogynistic, racist, transphobic views are no secret. Is this slander? Like, I am not a racist. I am not misogynistic. You can ask any one of my girlfriends or any woman that knows me. Well, I'm not a racist. I love all people. I think all lives matter. I try to be a good Christian. These guys have obviously killed God in their lives. And now because I got a little bit of, oh, what? I, I tweeted out that Jim Diodati was going to be on my show. Oh, no. The world is crashing down. Is this, this is an elected official calling uh, one of her voters some pretty damning things. Like this is, this, this gets. you a, voted for her? No, I'm a voter in her riding, though. Okay. Oh, no, maybe I'm right. not in her riding as a city. She's a city councillor. I forgot. Sorry. That's right. I'm not a voter. But at still least a constituent. Yeah, I'm There's a constituent in her city. For sure. So I don't, I don't know how, and I don't have time for integrity complaints. And really, I'm like Jeff Lokes said the other day. You want to waste $30,000 investigating somebody that said bad words on Twitter? Jesus fucking Christ. Like, come on. Right. I don't get time for that. And plus, it's free speech. It doesn't really offend me. I think it just lacks class, decorum, and it's, well, it breaks the code of conduct. It's it's not what an elected official should do. And then yesterday, I thought she, when she was on the McConnell show or somewhere, she started talking as a private citizen. I tweet this out. Oh, well, you remember when Andy Petrowski was trying to use the whole private citizen thing? And they're like, oh, no, you're 24 hours. Anyway, wh- what's your take on this? Two minute video where she lashes out and calls me misogynistic, racist, and transphobic. Like, should I just call my lawyer? I think that's defamation. I mean, I think that that's, um, it is a code of conduct concern. And I I knew that about you that you wouldn't go down that route. Um, And that's that's good because you're a free speech guy and actually you support her right to say this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, My view is that she's sniping at you from her kitchen instead of, Asking to be on your show. Yeah. Why can't she come and tell you to your face? Yeah. This Would is... you be opposed to her expressing those views to you personally? Absolutely not. I welcome a grant Would you be opposed flesh. to her drilling into every single receipt not she has about you? Not at all. Nothing. Would, hey. she, would she say, quote, you said this? Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, I said that. Yeah, I stand behind you. actually it have all. a productive remedial conversation so. to rehabilitate you into a community? I think I, I'm capable. I, I know I'm capable of that because... Uh, I don't get all wound up and passionate about these things so much. Like, I, I, it bothers me to see the language coming out of an elected counselor. But no, I mean, give me Grant LaFleche. Give me Andy Rob. Gill. I'd love to have Rob Gill on the show. I've invited them all on. So now because, well, I started out with Bill's movie because I wanted to get him on. He was a great conversation today. Just a really breath of fresh air. And then 
Jim and I are pretty friendly, you know. He texts me, Merry Christmas. I appreciate that, you know. Uh, I carve him when I think he needs it, and uh, like when he voted for the masks. And he's a liberal. That's fine. I get it. He supported liberal candidates before. We're friendly. My dad knows him, you know. He's always been very kind to me, very generous as well coming on the show, and I had him on 610 many times. So you tweet out a little something, and they're like, oh, no, this guy's getting too much pub. We can't let this go on. Did I lose you? Shandor, can you mute yourself? I'm doing a monologue now. What, what happened? Did I lose my... What happened? All right. <laughs> Meeting controls. This coffee's making me sweat. Well, okay. Well, Shandor is still there, according to my screen. Dude, are you on mute or what? All right. Shandor, well, if you come back in, just uh, give me the voice up. Let's go back and see what Kerry Porter has to say about good old Jimmy Fannin. All right. Let's see here. Nice house. Here we go. Here ...of a major international tourist destination um, that's trying to... So Mayor Diodati is the mayor of a major international tourist destination um, that's trying to attack, attract millions of people um, to it, uh, the beautiful Niagara Falls. And I just found out that he, for the second time, has chosen to go on a show called the Jim Fannin Show. And he's doing this a few days after Jim Fannin, again, was a lightning rod for a pile of hate and harassment and threats directed towards Councillor Yip. I just want to remind people that not too long ago, Jim Fannin called Councillor Laurie Yip a feminist pig and made fun of the circumstances around Councillor Yip's sister who passed away by suicide. Okay, so this whoa, suicide whoa, whoa. thing. Yeah, this suicide thing. Can you hear thing. me? Yeah, yeah, you're in. This okay, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. What's that about? Okay, here's the suicide thing. So, uh, and I'm going to, I'm not going to play that part of the video I don't think because I'm not set up to do that I could I, I could scroll through and find it <sighs> Laura Yip has been raped Laura Yip Whoa. has had an abortion Laura Yip yeah. um, says that her sister committed suicide I have no reason these are all things she puts out in the public yes um, my unthinkable abortion and I think just recently she came out on McConnell's show and said, not too many people know this, but I was raped. Okay. That's horrible. Uh, okay. Nobody's yeah. nobody's down with rape in this country, in this civilization. Rape is horrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just so we're clear. I'm not making light of anything. What I did say is that because her sister committed suicide, that maybe she has some authority to speak on it, on the effects of mental health. Maybe that, okay? That's right. the, that's I think that's the complete context that I put it in. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but someone claiming to be Laura Yip's father <laughs> back when the first story broke and I got 45 days of hate mail and canceled, triple canceled, fired, you know, <laughs> deplatformed. Uh, you know, people like this going around saying I'm misogynistic and racist and a bigot. And right. he took exception to what I said. Now, her name was Erica. I didn't know her. Horrible, horrible thing. We don't want our young kids dying for any reason, suicide or otherwise. He took exception with me saying that it, in fact, was not suicide. <laughs> and I was bro. I never returned the message to the guy. I don't know who he is. He doesn't share the same last name. I never hear Laura speak of her father ever and I thought well that is how fucked up is that how how healthy of a relationship do you have with your father if he cl is claiming that actually yeah it wasn't conclusive I forget how he put it I should have the exact words but can you imagine anyway the, the, the family structure is what we're 
what we're talking about though it, it, her claim here just to just to play uh carrie porter's advocate for a second to you mm. is uh is that you were mocking the suicide of her sister mm. and and your response is i i mean what what is it that she's she's even referring to you're saying that you were you mentioned it and what what was no i mentioned it wasn't it, I really it, what you, you certainly weren't you i mean do you uh, unequivocally refute that that you were mocking the suicide of her sister oh and, yes absolutely and i'm like i haven't watched this video in a very long time um but uh, my recollection and i can skip through it i probably should do that now because it jim you to sounded be like you were going point. down a psychoanalyst psychoanalyst of of, of laura which mm. She puts herself out there. I mean, I'm actually a bit of a Laura Ip expert too, not nearly as much as you are, but just because she puts herself out there and she's an interesting person and I've read a lot of her material and she puts it out there and she's mm -hmm. gets a lot of press and she gets a lot of platforming and so it's out there and I, and I know these things. So, you know, she, she, she said her first anxiety attack was when, because of her divorce, her parents had a divorce and her mom said to her that she wasn't allowed to have the feelings she was having so her mom like punished her for having an anxiety attack about a divorce and so she puts all this out there and so like i don't know how how comfortable anyone needs to be in psychoanalyzing it mm -hmm. but at the same time she does put it out there and makes herself a uh um a, a character in, in a story that she promotes it's her story and, and the only way to participate in her story is to do it on her terms um you know, not to not to counteract or contradict or 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 question or criticize the, that story. It's um it's a very challenging it's very challenging to to talk about her because mm -hmm. of that because I actually don't want to dunk on her and I don't want to criticize her psycho psychoanalyst position. I don't want to criticize her psychology. You know, so I, I don't think you do either. It's but it's so it's such a deep thing that like what's this she says here. Uh, you know, I mean, hatred. Yeah. I don't think you hate Laura Ip. No. I don't think or you, I, women. I think you're hurt or black. that she exiled you for having your own point of view. And that's different than hating someone. Yeah, I'm opposed to her ideas. If you could call that hating an idea, maybe, yeah. Uh, but this, you know, reiterating in the second, like, how many times do you have to drive home the fact that is aiming to send the millions of tourists who are black, indigenous, trans, lesbian, gay, co people of color, uh, oh experience mental illness and live with disabilities. Dude, <laughs> I'm going to have post-traumatic stress syndrome from this <laughs> after I'm done. <laughs> it's like, why do they have to throw every insult at you? For, I mean, mm -hmm. those are kind of meaningless words. What's it even mean? And why is she bringing in the tourism? Mm -hmm. I just think that's, that's bizarre. Like we got millions of foreigners. So is she implying that you are opposed to foreign tourism in yeah. in Canada in Niagara Falls? Are you, Jim, no. opposed to foreign tourism in Niagara Falls? No. Do you look your nose down at the Indians and Asians and nope. so on and so forth who come I to visit love and bring, them. bring their money? Oh, I love and by them. the way, aren't we under lockdown and you oppose lockdown and you want tourism and we don't have tourism? Carrie Wear a Mask Porter is a pro lockdown person who pretty much doesn't care about Niagara Falls' tourism industry or any industry at all. Yeah. So what's she, what's she talking about tourism for? Sorry, I'm, I live in Niagara Falls. What's she talking about tourism for? Oh, I think she's just dragging Jim into this because she's figuring if she gets the angle yeah. on Jim. Yeah, then... he's an advocate of tourism in Niagara Falls, and she is an advocate of the St. Catharines Cabal. And which... her greatest pleasure would be seeing Jim Diodati cancel his his interview with me because Bill's not gonna not gonna cancel. This would be the feather yeah. in her cap. She cancels uh, Diodati from coming on my show, and she can say, "See, now he had a pretty good interview lined up there." And because Flexing. we're scared of what he might say with this misogynistic pig, um, and see how I use pig. It's not a sex thing, just like. See you next Thursday's not. Uh, <laughs> Wait, where's is there a misogynistic pig? Where did somebody call you that? No, no, but that's what oh. I call myself. Well, other people are calling you that. You're getting dunked on all over the place. I'm, I'm, I'm observing. Oh, really? Yeah, I've only seen. Yeah, a small I mean, you, you, it. it's it. 
you've been given a reputation that I think is not deserved. And even I was, I was just quote shamed for defending you for that. Yeah. Just because you have this reputation, and I think I, I, so you I have a, you have any actually seen myself this as clip. the outcasts. Yeah, yeah, you're an outcast, Jim. Yeah, for sure. You're damn right. You're an outcast, and I'm an outcast. And people and, think uh, I do this just to stir Bill's the pot. Bill's an outcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not looking for conflict, but I am looking for people to stop tweeting Jesus fucking Christ when they don't even believe in God. So, Shandor, you haven't actually seen this clip. I'm going to play that for you. It's not too long. That's here. right. That's right, Jim. When I first came on your show, I had no idea the mess you were getting me involved yeah. in. <laughs> so let's go to the hate speech. I just <laughs> wanted to spout off and use your platform for my agenda. Damn it. Damn shitting kids. Um, okay, here we go. I'm going to switch over. Oh, no. We'll, we'll just play it from here. You can see this, right? I'm sharing with you still. Here it is. This is it. Yeah, here we go. The DFC. Sometimes I don't like you seeing my face. Um, oh, come on, man. I don't see you drawing pictures of Muhammad. I don't see you take Muhammad's name in vain. And I don't see you saying anything about the religion that... Oh, we don't even need to say anything about the religion that... Why do you hate Christians so much? They fucking built your society, you dumb fucking cunt. It's not nice. <laughs> but you know what? Who cares? <laughs> Are they going to throw me off Facebook too? Ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, no, you knew right away. It's my like, ah, intention shit. to get banned from everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I got to get that YouTube wow. channel back. And I'm a good boy on Twitter. I troll, but I'm not. I don't use language like that. I never would. But in real life, my passion comes out. And you fucking people drive me fucking crazy. Especially this kind of nonsense. Like, just have some respect. You know, it's got nothing to do with respecting Christians. It's about respecting anybody that's got any type of faith. Because you take that shit, that attitude, for one specific religion, you don't think that... What? You mock them all. Fuck. Makes me sick. I don't know why I care so much, but I was amped up when I saw that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's interesting, this, Jim. Yeah, that's, you know, that's... I, I what I see here is, you know, you're expressing your offense to what she was saying, and you did it in your terms on your platform, and that's, you know, they plucked this out later and then and took it out of context and, and ran you through the mud over this, and that's just, that was just so wrong. Uh, yeah. it, it's you know like I, I'm... you're you're. Like you said all along, you were doing a bit. Yeah, I, well, the I mean, bit, the bit, is, the hair on my arms didn't go st- stick up on end. Like, oh no, you did something terrible. Oh. So, I mean, have you ever, like, reached out to Laura and said, like, we could talk about this? Yeah, I called her three times. I left voicemail. I texted her, and then the next time I called, I think it was like that one ring you're blocked straight to voicemail thing. So I'm like. Okay, well, if I'm blocked, I didn't yeah. text her to see if I was blocked or whatever, but I'm like, okay, well, I tried, and, um, you know, I have... No All right, Jim, I, so you want to be a politician now. You're going to call people dumb fucking cunts? <laughs> it was... Uh, it was. Are uh, you? It, you know, that's, Are you going to continue talking like that <laughs> in 2021, I 2022? Do, I do have a filthy mouth, and I've been known to call Justin Trudeau a cuck. I've been known to okay. call right. people pigs like uh who's that who's the justin trudeau's can we uh, concede the point that we need to increase improve the discourse can we at least say yes Yes. we will be in the in fact we could win Mm -hmm. simply by being the um take the high road yeah them yeah if you go they go low you go high here's the thing they've gone so low literally i'm gaining i'm gaining in like uh people noticing what i'm doing just because I'm not swearing at people and I have full right. sentences. Right. You know, just because I have, like, and I actually compose a sentence compared to, like, the, basically influencers like you have a problem. And same with Laura and Grant. You guys have the same problem. Your fans are crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you, you can do the best possible work in your, in, that you do and you take a stand and you make a point. You put it out there. And then what if your fan decides to go off and spout off? So, like, the hypocrisy here that your fan attacked her 
well, what about her fans attacking him and the Flesh's fans attacking people? And what happened with Alicia Herder and all of the harassment she endured? And nobody in the media stood up for her except like Rebel and 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 the Toronto Sun. Look at this. They beauty. didn't stand up against the bullying. Vicky. So like the hypocrisy is 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 naked and transparent. You know, I feel like these people are falling on their own swords right now. When I listened to Laura Ip's interview yesterday that you just played on the radio, I was, she sounds kind of like she's falling apart. She has no coherent argument to make. In fact, she makes every argument against her. Yeah, she conflicts in herself her everywhere when she says, well, it doesn't rise to the level of harassment. So why are you calling the cops then, dude? Like, you know, like <laughs> right. you just said. Even Rob doesn't... Gill didn't like that part. Yeah. I even like. When the Death Star comes Rob... for you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that clip? Did no. you get that clip? Which one? So here's Vicky Fagan, eh? Have you, let's talk about this. Yeah. That's sad. Oh, yeah. Have, have you ever met her? I'm not sure. I meet a lot of people and I don't often remember who they are, but um, she doesn't ring a bell to me. Shame on Diodati right. and Fannin. Shame on, you know, use proper grammar, please. Pro <laughs> proofread your stuff because we're trying to read this in English. Vicky Fagan. Shame oh, no. on Diodati. Yeah. Oh, no. Disavow. <laughs> Disavow. Uh, shame on Diodati and Fannin should be arrested. Shame on Diodati and Fannin should be arrested. Whatever. Okay. He is a misogynistic lowlife who gets some kind of thrill out of harassing women. One in particular. Unforgivable. But when Maxime Bernier is the feather in, in your cap as an interview, it says a lot. Enough of this creep. Well, apparently not enough of this creep, Vicky Fagan. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, um, it's just where does this stuff end and this is all because of this you know right and they could have let it rest they didn't have here's, to keep it going here's how you do what exactly are they distracting from you know like they're trying to set the narrative control the narrative uh, steal your identity abuse it and come out on top come out as if they're the moral high heart the moral superiors mm -hmm. um Sorry, no. It's, it's this is divisive. This is polarizing. Here's this is, here's how you deal. This with is driving it. wedges between people. Here's, They're trying to tell you and anyone like you that you're an exile and always will be. Yeah. Just go away and dot dot dot. Here's my advice to uh, people that are dealing with guys like me that they disagree with. Ignore them. You I, you hate Trump? Stop giving him your time. Carrie Porter, Vicky Fagan. Well, what harm are you causing? You're not really causing any harm. You, Words are dangerous. They've been, and they've apparently been boosting I'm, um, you by. Oh yeah, my uh, biggest absolutely. promoter. You think this? Do you think this video would have a thousand views on it? Eleven hundred and fifty-two views without Carrie Porter. <laughs> you're making me money, Carrie. Right. You know, like you're actually my best promoter. <laughs> like, how many people do you think are going to watch my show on Thursday night when I put the title in? Carrie Porter and Laura Yip try and cancel Jim Fan, and here's my response: two hours. What are we at now? One forty-four. So, anyway, okay, I, I don't so know we're why. we're coming up. Well, I mean, I, long people that watch the, my stuff, the are, they know that you know. And I kind of told the story of my history at the station and stuff like that, and uh, Tom McConnell and. Uh, you know, now, now, where's this twinning guy? Uh, I'm sure she right. retweeted it. No, like Carrie, who, who retweeted it? Just go to my feed, bro. You know how I am. <laughs> Check your message. Is that from me? Because <laughs> I sent you the, that's the Fagan clip, I think. Yeah, you just go to my feed. You'll see. Uh, oh, you, you, yes. uh, you're the top. Fan yeah. should be arrested. <laughs> You know like, what? Hey, what? You know, if I played How their though? if I played their game, I would have the NRP knocking on Laura's door in about a half an hour. Because right now at midnight, twelve thirty, I feel unsafe because Vicky Fagan said I should be arrested. And you in you incited a mob to come for me. That's right. Again. So I got all my see, doors the, and windows the, locked, I but totally, I'm going to call the totally cops and make because, sure they come to your place and wake your kids up at 2 o'clock in the morning. See how you fucking like uh, it. 
Well, I don't play that uh, game. I, yeah. I mean, when they say you should be arrested, they know that you shouldn't be arrested. What they're saying is, well, it creates this uh, psychological uh, imperative that, well, since you can't be arrested, we have to use extra legal means. And that's what the shame brigade is. Mm -hmm. The shame brigade is for extra legal, not police, not justice, not the courts, but the mob. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's where it all comes from. And then uh, here you are. Oh, twinning. Uh, at least Jim you like I... my response here? This is a quality response, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Have you seen this? You haven't seen this yet, have you? What? Oh, twinning. I call them the cool kids. Oh, all right. the cool kids scoring points by dunking on the outcasts. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're the only ones who get to sit at the lunch table. Yeah. You have to sit on the floor in the dirt. They're the ones who, who are in control of the cafeteria. And they're the cool kids. Carrie Porter, Laura Ebb, the St. Catharines Cabal, and, you know, the arm twisters who, who use psychological manipulation, social justice, head games, cry bullies, who, you know, who, who arm twist everyone. So and I want to refute something that they say. They say that Laura Ebb and other politicians, that male politicians take the same position as Laura Ipp. Uh, no, she, the original tweet, the one about Jordan Peterson, is the kind of tweet that only, only a radical feminist could say. A, a person who fully embodies and identifies an, a certain identity of wom womanhood. So it's, it's not like any, a man could have offended or made that offensive statement in the first place. It's, it's, so, so there is a, an, an aspect of it that has to do with her being a woman, but it's, but it's, but it's her choice to have done that. It's not like it, it's not like she was singled out. She was not singled out, uh, absurdly or without reason. You know what I'm tired her, of is, is this idea that I'm threatened by powerful women. I love powerful women. I met Debbie Zimmerman probably 20 oh, yeah. years ago when she was the chair of the region, not because, um, well, not for any other reason other than she is a dying. Like to me back then, she was a star. She was a strong woman with a good handshake, good looking, articulate, tall, cuts a great image. And she, she made time to meet with me in her office as the chair of the region. Back, yeah, I was still political. I can't remember why I felt it was important to meet her, but I wanted to meet her. And I did. And I was not disappointed. And I'm still, you know. I still I still feel that way about powerful women. I love them. I want to create more of them. I want them to be more effective. I just don't want them to be talking about my body, my choice up until nine months. That's when I get a little pissy. And then Debbie Zimmerman, well, in my not, opinion, it's not has... It's power that concerns you. It's, it's how you use the power. It's intention. Yeah. I have no concern over power if it's a man or a woman or a white or a black or anyone. Yeah. It's, it's what are you doing with that power? And, and here's a, a powerful woman saying you should be arrested, the, the, trying to deplatform you. Have that screenshot? Did you show the screenshot of Laura Ip literally calling for Douglas to be deplatformed? No, I took that to mean that she was talking about me, complain, report, no. and deplatform. Well, oh, okay. no, she was said the context is that she was she telling received everyone a message to report on and, Douglas and exposed it. And then wants to platform the guy after misconstruing what he said. We are watching. Oh, let's call the police over that, right? So it's about men who are such cowards that they hide behind anonymity. I've never had a name. It's on not the power. Ever. It's the choices of what's being done with the power. Mm -hmm. And so to hide behind gender does a disservice to all women. It's a huge disservice to feminism to to go and abuse power and then hide behind your gender. Sorry, ladies, that's the issue. Look at this guy. He's going on and on. It's about men who choose to say nothing. Oh, gosh. It's about men living That's in a right. community it's where these fault. attitudes towards women are allowed. Well, we're not allowed to have a political difference of opinion with a woman because she's a woman? Stop it, man. But, you know, this gives women a bad name in politics because if you're going to be this sensitive, excuse me, and this thin-skinned that you can't take a little political disagreement I never called her any names. I said she was a radical left feminist. She adores that title, you know? Right. And then she... She, she used all her titles. Yeah. Milady. 
she, her, it's about lady, young men feeling like name. they should have some sort of macho lady. ideal to live up to and mirroring what they see around them. Men like this are afraid of Laura. Uh, no. We're afraid of Laura's ideas. We're not afraid of Laura. In fact, I want Laura to be an effective counselor, even if I don't believe with what she's bringing to the table as far as an agenda. I don't want to shut her up. She keeps, oh, yeah, they just want to shut me up. When I ever told her not to, to stop talking? Never. It's ridiculous. Well, no, people do message her and say, shut up. Yeah. And I so she takes that literally to mean stop talking, not what you're saying is incorrect and it offends. Fuck, these guys, Twever, tw Twever Twinning, he, this yeah. this guy's got a lot he replied to of me time. Too. Eleven posts. Like, he subtweeted the heck out of this issue. Oh yeah, and I screenshotted it and I included it in my archives. When Robert I have George a thread is, that archives this very nicely. When Robert so George comes to, to your defense, you know you got a good crowd there. <laughs> uh, yeah, these good comments. You know, I don't think rude this is playing into their hands. Oh, wait, yeah. uh, maybe. I don't think that they're. I don't think that they're winning this this mm. one. I think that Carrie Porter didn't get the feedback that she was expecting from her video. Uh, instead, she got called out by me and you. Like mm. the fact that she's just like, it's not really going to go anywhere for them. It's gonna instead, it's gonna boost you. And I, maybe it's it's this thing that leftists always create their own opponents. I'm not a big and they fan actually of Robert don't have George's. an identity of their own. Their own, so they thrive off of milking their opponent's identity. Yeah, they steal your identity in order to have one. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge they fan have of no moral uh, position. So they have to fake that they have a moral position by taking superiority over someone who does have a moral position. Shut up. And, shut up a minute. <laughs> I'm not a I'm big mad. fan of uh, Robert George's. I, I met with him for beers uh, one time at the mansion house because uh, I'll get with anyone. Even if I, if Rob Gill called me or Andy Gill or somebody said, Hey Jimmy, fuck it. Let's bury the hatchet. I want to meet you. Let's, let's flesh this out because nothing gets solved on Twitter. I did have beers with Robert George at one point, and he, he's critical of everyone all the way around, depending on what his opinion is. He's a conservative. But here he's like, I don't condone anyone threatening anyone. I didn't threaten anyone. But as you like, love her, others as, but as you like, love her, others think <laughs> she's a obnoxiously rude and dis disrespectful victim cry. I see. She has some very good strong points and spelling could definitely be a huge asset to Nagger, yet she chooses to be nasty. This is true. Uh-oh, oh, nasty can't woman. Use, uh, can't say that. When everywhere you can't go and end up having problems with nasty. people, one must... But he makes a great point, eh? Yeah, and one, one must eventually realize that you are the problem. You are the common denominator, as I would say. Laura's had issues, has had issues everywhere, so I guess she is the problem. Fuck. Like, these guys, like, I'm sorry. Like, this is my life, I guess. Uh, because I put myself in this position and I'm the first guy to take responsibility for where I am in my life. Uh, I'm not going to stand down on this one. No way. So that is that. Brother, hey. uh, I'm feeling it just like you are. I appreciate your support and uh, your comments on it. And uh, I, I don't know where this leads. I, I kind of felt like after the first go around that I had given Laura Yip the greatest gift ever by uh, unifying her base. Because for 45 days, right. I got nothing but hate mail, even from guys that claim to be her father. I had a woman come to my Jim Fannin show page and engage me. And I said, what, you never called anyone a bad name before? Like, seriously, we're having this conversation? You know what she says to me? In print, you came out of a cunt. <laughs> that was actually, I, right. how can you not laugh yeah. at that? That's fucking funny. Yeah. You know, my yeah. mother's no longer here. Okay. That stings a little bit, but that has got nothing to do with my mom. That's funny. Like, that's straight up balls funny. And so, Laura, your, your, your fans, your mob <laughs> has come for me many times, and I'm still right. here. <laughs> Oh, that's the spirit. Like to hear that. So you can't. I cannot be canceled further. What DoorDash is going to refuse to take my call now? <laughs> what PayPal is going to cancel me? I shouldn't say this on YouTube. Oh that's no! It, you know, <laughs> oh no! You're but this for is it. a cancel culture. Well, you can't get an Uber. Yeah. You can't use PayPal. 
You can't get skipped the dishes. Well, You're yeah. banned from right. everything. And that's what these right, people which want. Which is why this defamation is actually really, really unacceptable. The, mm. to, to continue to defame you like this, you know, mm-hmm. it, that can't be tolerated. We can't live in a world where they, they do that. So I don't know what to do about it except to just call it out. I actually think, as like I was saying, I think that they're, think that they're falling on their own sword on this and just the slightest push and they fail on their own like like the flesh was sidelined and i think that they're going to be they're being political they're politically sidelining themselves by being so such like dramatic it's they're not going to go anywhere with that it's i think it's going to fall apart on them that's my that's my view oh greg miller too one of my favorite gingers on council he's getting in on the action (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah it doesn't get any more well, left well. than these guys by ooh, scary scary <sighs> stuff kids well they're not offering you a path of redemption and then the leftists never do they have a they have a witch they put them on the pyre and they burn yeah that's it it's you know a for a girl that was claiming to be above this uh and have a superior morality she is retweeting every single trashy uh post that tags her and in totally carves on me. Here's Mike Saunders. I worked with Mike Saunders mm-hmm. at 610 CKTB before uh, one of the bell uh, rounds. He was fired. I stayed on uh, because I wasn't a, 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 an employee. It was a contractor. I like Mike Saunders. We had a good relationship. But look at Mike Saunders now. My own lawyer, Robbie Welsh, calling me a has-been and a spent bullet. Robbie, you're a lawyer. You used to, you're a family friend of mine for 50 years. <laughs> I know you got a little bit of short man syndrome with the five, four foot five thing. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But spent bullet, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm well, a semi-automatic guys, though, over here, it? bro. And I have no shortage <laughs> of ammunition. I know you don't want to fight the guys. You don't want to fight the guys that, the you know, have an ink well full you know over at the standard but here i am mike anyway so mike thinks i'm a racist pig now david hall here's uh-huh. another one Phelan shaw she, for a girl oh that, like this yeah, is victim see, culture go. christine no, hales i like christine hales but i guess i'm out of her books now barbara butters <sighs> what a useless fucking piece of counselor sheets turned out to be Look at this. every single every single okay. post gets retweeted that's not the high road, Maybe. Laura Yib. That's just, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. I have had four days, oh, today I got sidelined with the most incredible um, migraine. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, lay, like, unbelievable. Right. I, I kicked it now. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm medicated. I, what did it take? <laughs> it's like... Five four hundred ibuprofens, two naproxens, I never tried those before. <laughs> then I was so amped, I couldn't, I didn't know which way to turn. I got a half a perk into me and a half a V10, and I feel okay now. I got some coffee. I went out for a midnight coffee run. <laughs> wow, yeah. But here we are, brother. I get I get intense migraines too after processing a lot of data. Well, I think I it's the adrenaline. Like for four days, stuff. I read, read, read everything these people say. Yeah, for four everything. Days. Yeah, everything. For I like I actually spend more time doing this than I should in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a baby. I have a, a business that I should be focused on, but instead, you know, this is social disruption. And so, just like on Sunday, Laura's saying that she, her day was disrupted because she couldn't just sit there baking pies with her kids as she wanted to do. Instead, she got trolled on the internet. The rest <laughs> of us got trolled on the internet too with her and she dragged us into her, the storyline. She dragged us into this, like, you know, I I couldn't just sit it out. Mm. Uh, you ca- definitely can't sit it out. Um, anyone who comes on your show can't sit it out, really. Anyone who wants to build an alternative platform can't sit it out. You know, we have to say something to, to set the record straight. Um, there's no path to redemption for, for, for people who they exile. And that's a big red flag because what they, they should just be like, well, you made a mistake with what he said, but if you're going to talk to him, talk to him. It's just words. They're just words. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? 
It's just words. You're just talking on your own platform about stuff you think is interesting. And people are, if they choose to listen, then that's democracy. So what what's going on here? Why are these people such authoritarian, anti-democracy people who exile, who choose to, who to exile? Mm. And, oh, they, first they came for Jim Fannin and I wasn't Jim Fannin, so I didn't say anything. You know, they, they've, they've knocked off, they're knocking off their list. Oosterhof, Wilsma, you platforming them makes you on their list. You don't have a platform, suddenly they stop talking about you. It's not about you, it's about your platform and what you stand for, opposition. So you say this may turn out to backfire on them. I originally thought that after my 45 days of hate, and I don't care who you are, people think I'm untouchable. No, after I just saw that ip, that all those retweets, I'm like, oh, God. Mm-hmm. Those are dozens and dozens of people who've just internalized the narrative that you're the monster, yep. she's the victim. But like I said and before, that goes on for after the last ever. 45 days of the cancel culture coming my way, I don't care who you are. Like people think I'm untouchable and that I don't give a shit. I'm deeply sensitive and it all bothers me. Like nobody wants to read that stuff about themselves. Uh, I thought I'd be better equipped for it this time. I think I am uh, because, well, well, here I am uh, talking about it. I'm certainly, you know, I haven't ever tried to hide anything. So I felt like I had given her exactly what she wanted, giving her the victim culture to go, oh, I don't know if I want to run again because this is so difficult. My children, I fear for their safety and I I can't right. be part of it. You think that she's going to cancel her political career now? No. So, and hearing you say, you, I think this, this is, is foundational. Gonna, this is going to backfire on them. <laughs> Before I was uh, saying, uh, you know what, uh, you know, it's it's not worth it because I gave her exactly what she wanted. But now, I'm not so sure that a lot of people aren't going to say, you can't hear that ri- on the radio and go, what? Somebody sent you a message and said we're watching you and had pictures of five kids holding sun. And and, and who, right. where is that? Here's the here it is right here. I think no. Robin you got Savage. my uh, you got my screenshot. You go to my thread. You go to my thread. I got a close up on it. Okay. I'm the thread master, bro. <laughs> I'm the thread master. <coughs> it's like it's just social media journalism. I document. You can access it easily. So you're looking for. Uh, well, I thought I lost my train of thought. Now it's getting late. What was I looking for? Oh, you're looking for the. Uh, my goodness, there's a lot of stuff here. Oh, um, the screenshots. Oh, me yes. Explaining okay. what happened. No, no, I want to so see. So it starts Douglas's, on the Jim Fannin retweet. It Doug- starts on the retweet of your. Douglas's. It starts on the retweet. There it is. Okay. So don't click on the retweet. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you got the thread. Okay, here's here's the message. Okay, so I'm gonna try. That's and right. And right next to that image is a close up. I can't make this any bigger. I don't think. Yeah, I opened that. You can. Uh, well, maybe not in that. Okay, so here's here's uh, Douglas comes in and whatever. I'm not responsible for Douglas. Okay, you have a mouth. You don't. You don't really condone for... this kind of behavior. By the way, messaging people just randomly, being like, "Oh, you shouldn't like." Eh, it's not I, very productive. I'm not into the mob Immature. culture. So at the end of one of his messages, he said, "You should be ashamed." What is that message teaching young males in our community? Hi, Douglas. This is a standard reply. looks like an auto reply. Thank you for your message. I'll get back to you, blah, blah, blah. And then he comes back with, you have a mouth on you that is not fit for counsel. Then he shows the picture of the kid holding up the sign, we are watching you. And then underneath it says, we are watching. Oh, not you. We are watching. Okay? So follow the thread here. You should be ashamed of yourself. What is this teaching young men in our community you have a mouth on you there you go oh here's the kids we're watching the kids are watching you i that's what i take from this you're not fit Mm -hmm. our kids are watching you and you're not a good example for them that's not i'm sitting out front of your house waiting for you to come out so i can beat you up that's yeah yeah but no kind of message is that sending our kids oh by the way the kids are watching yeah no wonder she was offended and no wonder she reframed the argument to have nothing to do with what he originally said. Mm. And instead, it's her version. Shifting She's the goal now, posts. instead of the victimizer, the victim. Shifting the goalposts, my brother. Look All at right. the close-up on that. What's on that? the We Are Watching of those kids. 
Oh, this isn't that I mean, the cutest picture? Look at this little guy. I screenshotted yeah, this guy as, and blew him up know. because, like, this kid, I I love this child, right? Oh, you can't see me. Uh, the guy uh, uh, right front, this kid, his face, oh, oh, my. Oh, how can I? I wish I could. Oh, let me see. I'm going to do adorable. it this way. Adorable. I'm going to do it this way. Adorable. Adorable. <laughs> Uh, speaking of kids, man, I really am yeah. uh, looking forward to seeing you and the wife and kid again soon, man. That kid, likewise, uh, likewise. That kid had a really uh, profound impact on me in a really vulnerable time in my life and taught me a good lesson. Excellent. And you did too because you're the guy that said, you know what? This kid is not going to see a facial expression for another year until he's after a year old. Look at this kid. Which is next month. Look That's at right. this little man. I know. I, I, this... I guess I, I put him in some uh, protest theater myself. He was uh, on the stroller, in a stroller on the front page of the Standard, uh, being an anti-masker with me. So yeah. there you go. That's well, right. for anyone that uh, questions why do you do this, why do you put up with this, this stuff, right here, kids. See this young child right here? See this gorgeous human being, this perfect unadulterated yeah. innocent child this is why i, mean, I do what i, I do i feel you I love the problem with ever saying that is everyone says the same thing about that is it yeah the, the climate change people call their groups for the children yeah everyone says for the children it's yeah. like uh you know what a uh, the point the point for douglas's context is he wasn't at all saying he's going to watch from his car and then stalk her and and attack her because if you see in her thread she took that comment. She said, quote, there's a violence in we are watching. A violence? A and violence? This is this picture of some kids with white paint, by the way, and a peace, and a peace sign and a happy face. Oh, and it's an interracial group, too. Uh, that's great. So it's a diverse group of children. And it clicks all the boxes of intersectionality. Right? And so for some reason, though, she launched into... Here's 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 what concerns me, or or what here's what reveals the illogic of her position. It's if you're actually vulnerable, there's no tactical advantage in going on the radio and saying there's nothing I'm I scared. can do if they come. Mm -hmm. Like why would you like saying I, I don't lock my doors? No. Uh, here's my address. Like, here's when I'm no, at work. Gonna... If you want to rob my house. <laughs> right. No, you don't go around saying I'm, I, I'm so vulnerable. Like, excuse me, damsel in distress to the max. Like, somebody <laughs> save me, please, because uh, they could just, you know, at any time. Amen. What? So I just think that's really, that reveals the logic of her position, because if she was really vulnerable, why would, either she wouldn't say it, or maybe she is vulnerable, and, and it's it's irrational to, to say that out loud to the radio audience. Like, imagine she has, like, 15 crazy motherfuckers who've never said or done anything are just actually watching her. Let's just imagine in her world, right? A whole, a whole cadre of them. But why is she telling them that there's nothing she, they, nothing that she can do once they come to her? It's crazy. I will not worry. I would just send that face? message to your enemy. Well, I am weak. Please attack. I am weak. No, who sends that message to their enemies? Did you, can you see this? I will not wear it on my face. I will not wear it any place. I will not wear it to get in. I will not wear it on my chin. I will not wear it on my ear. I will not wear it out of fear. I will not wear your stupid mask. I will not wear it. Wear it. So do not ask. <laughs> That's Seuss. right. I trust Dr. Seuss more than Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Oh, Grant LaFleche is uh, telling us that the third wave is already here. Wow, yeah. doctor. You'll notice that he has been sidelined because otherwise he would have been running this story. Like He didn't Listen, have to get the bylines. You know what? It's a Bill Sawchuk story. Here's the other thing that... He's off the beat. He's I not doing the social yet, stories anymore. And I'm hesitant to go here, but since the gloves are off now, how can Grant oh. LaFleche continue to report on Laura Yip when they've had an intimate physical relationship i don't think they do i think they got called out and then he can't and he's off the beat he does covid up who, who told you he's not doing that anymore uh the byline it was a bill Sachuk story 
Oh no, the I two, mean two or three stories. Oh, the I see what you mean. Story. No, but you didn't get the Oosterhof story either. But she that was gets uh, some, Sean Vanderclis, right? She gets some really great press. Why? Because they had a relationship, or or st I don't know if they're still having. And it. that's not the only reason <laughs> why. That's also the editorial prerogative after. The last council, she's the reset the region foot in the door. Mm. The last council stole their laptop. And remember that whole charade? No. Right? They locked the guy out and they, they took the guy's laptop. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was an ombuds report. And so mm -hmm. from the editorial position, like they they want to have an inside scoop no matter what. So, And plus, they're all, they're all leftist activists. They're, uh, they're engaging in, in social engineering using whatever institutions available, exiling anyone who opposes it. Here's my lawyer. <laughs> ah, Robbie, you gotta love, gotta love a man with SMS. Is this brand new? No, this is, this is this as is a old. result of this is the new. This is new. the first time it went around. Uh, once in a while, I'll go check. Are you gonna have to go head to head with her? With the, is she gonna run for the same seat? Uh, well, not unless I really like it. It's going to take you be up against Biddle. You're going to be, it's a Biddle thing. Well, Biddle I, sticking around? I may be in the federal election, but, uh, it's, it's not worth my time to go after and try and unseat Laura yet because, well, she's the boss now, dude. I know my place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, no, I mean, that's, that's fine. It's, it's actually quite stunning to see how much activity the, uh, the narrative that they promote gets mm -hmm. it's stunning uh, to f to be this outcast and both ideologically and and socially uh, and to look in on it and be like, wow, it, it it's like a it's like watching people react to triggers. It, it's not it, these <laughs> are sort of like phantoms. They respond to the topic. They don't care about the content. The content's never important. I'm not it's all about a huge positioning themselves socially and virtue signals. I'm not a big Teresa Tam, Doctor Teresa Tam fan. <laughs> but why are you so small, Justin? <laughs> you tiny, like this big. That's, <laughs> that's pretty funny. I like that one. Yeah, I got to get better at my impressions, foreign accents. I'm working on it. She's got that like uh, internationalist accent. Mm hmm. Mm, very upscale. All right, brother. I'm gonna get you out of here. I'm gonna cut this and. Uh, yeah, there you go. I think that's Thanks about, for bringing me on late night. I think that's about all the attention I need to give to this uh, saga. Oh yeah, this right. This drama. Yeah, right. This. Uh, we'll see. What are you in grade mm -hmm. twelve or eight? They go, when they go low, you go high. What are you five? Meet me at the bike rack. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> all right. Peace. Love. Good night and good luck. Hug your neighbor and take that <laughs> filthy, dirty diaper off your face because it doesn't work anyways. You're probably asymptomatic. Get over yourself. I'm out.